Welcome to today's ministries. I'm Chris Alderete with Soft Touch Home Care and my co-host is... Jeff Tristan with Baptist Wound Care System. Well, how about those spurs last night? Oh, and I understand you were at the game, were you well, not? Well, we'd like to wish all the nurses yes. Happy Nurses Week. Happy this Nurse is Nurses Week. Week. And Soft Touch had a box at the game last night. And we celebrated Nurses Week with all of our nurses there in the box and had a great time cheering on the Spurs. Well, great, great. And congratulations to all the nurses. Absolutely. That's right. They do a lot for our community. They so, sure do. And speaking of Nurses Week, our guests today are going to fall right in line with that, are they not? They sure are. You know, a couple months ago, we had two individuals from the Northeast Orthopedics Group. And today, mm -hmm. we have have one of the shining stars from that group, oh, do we, we not? Oh, we sure do. We sure do. I think we're going to be getting some useful information. It's going to be a great show, Chris. And we want to remind you, our audience, if you'd like to call in during the show, you can call us here at 734-5371. We'll be more than happy to take your question today on the air, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you want to introduce our guest, Jeff? Sure. Well, today we have Dr. Fox with us. Dr. David Fox is with the Northeast Orthopedic group who, as you said, we had two other physicians on, and we also have Kelly Cooper, who's his PA. So welcome, Dr. Fox. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you all for having us. Sure. And welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Dr. Fox, you have had over 25 years of practicing orthopedic surgery. Tell us, you know, what made you go into orthopedics? And, you know, <laughs> orthopedics is a big word, and you can explain to the audience what your practice covers well, and where you were trained. Or orthopedics is a big word. Uh, you know, I chose orthopedics early on because putting stuff back together was fun for me. Okay. It just, it made sense to me. I was reasonably good at it and I enjoyed it. Um, as I went along in the world of medicine and, and did orthopedics, what I really enjoyed doing was studying the hip and the knee. So today in my practice, I'm, I've isolated my, or subspecialized if you will, in just doing surgery of the hip and the knee. And for the most part, we do arthritis surgery of the hip and the knee. Okay. And so orthopedics, although is a long word, you can think of it as people that operate on the arms and legs. That's okay. the easiest way mm -hmm. to think of us. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in Texas, but grew up in Oklahoma and wow. uh, went to undergrad at the University of Oklahoma, medical school at University of Oklahoma. So. Here I am in South Texas as a big Oklahoma Sooner fan. Uh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm happy I'm sure to say <laughs> I'm happy to say I fly a OU flag in my front yard. Oh, oh. Uh, you're brave! <laughs> that, that has been turned upside down before, as we've been beaten by Texas and whatnot. But it, it has uh, it's been a great place to you know to live even as a Sooner. Mm -hmm. I did my training at the Mayo Clinic and uh, for orthopedics and came back to San Antonio, or came to San Antonio in 1989, and have been here now for 25 years in practice. Well, you also have a proud history of serving our country, do you not? I don't. Oh, you I do? don't have I a proud history of serving <laughs> our country. I thought I, I saw Navy here. Dr. Chance, uh, Dr. Oh. Uh, oh, Kelly, Kelly. PA, okay. has a proud history of there serving our country. I wish I did. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, Kelly, that's a great segue into uh, an introduction of you. Uh, you are a PA with the group, right? Correct. Tell the audience what a PA is. Well, a PA is similar to a nurse practitioner. We're mid-level providers. We can see and treat patients, write prescriptions, that type of thing, as long as we have our physician there. Um, we cannot do surgery by ourselves. That's about the only thing that we can't do. And we collaborate, if I can talk, collaborate closely with our physician. And so how long have you been a, a physician's assistant? I graduated in 2003 from the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. I've been practicing orthopedics ever since. Wow. Um, coming up on seven years now with Dr. Fox specifically. And you were in the U.S. Navy? I was. Tell I us was about a that. Corman. I was a corpsman. I uh, graduated high school and uh, decided to get uh, money for college, I joined the Navy. I became a corpsman. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister was a nurse and I thought that would be a great way to, to go, uh, route to take, so I chose a, a corpsman in the Navy. Um, while I was in, I decided maybe not nursing, maybe this, you know, physician assistant looks like a pretty good career path. So, very good. Yeah. Well, Dr. Fox and Kelly, welcome to San Antonio. Thank We're you. Happy Thank to have you. It. Why don't you guys give a little shout out to your family now that y'all have relocated and y'all are here in San Antonio. Kelly? A shout out to my family. Well, my husband is uh, active duty Army. 
Oh, he yeah. is the CFO of BAMC right now, or SAMC as they call okay. it. Mm -hmm. um, I have three wonderful children, Caleb, Megan, and Madison, and also Elizabeth is a, a daughter of mine as well. She lives in um, Pennsylvania. So I have my three with us here. Uh, they keep us very busy. <laughs> I've got one getting ready to graduate high school. I can't even believe that. <coughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. This is a month of graduation. Oh, May. It's a busy month. It sure busy is. Month. Mm -hmm. And the love of my life is Jamie, my wife. Uh -huh. uh, She's my uh, true north, my guiding star. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two daughters, Aspen and Carson. Uh -huh. One's 19. Uh, she just finished esthetician school. school. I have okay. a hard time with that. <laughs> I, would, I do too. Yeah, I'm glad she, you did she, it. <laughs> she's now practicing that. And Carson is a junior in high school, and she wants to go into journalism. So we're looking for colleges for her right now. Very cool. So, uh, Exciting Shout time. Shout out to them. Yes. Exciting time yes. for us. Well, Jeff, you know, when we talk about families, you know, this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. It sure is. So do you want to give a shout out to your mom? I sure do. And, and you know, I've seen some very good shout outs from some of the NBA players. Mm -hmm. Kevin Garnett, if anyone got a chance to see that MVP, uh, his speech was just so touching. But what he did at the end of the speech is he told his mom, you're the true MVP. Oh, how So wonderful. my mom is the true MVP of my family. Mm -hmm. She's kept us together. So... Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And my mom, who is an identical twin and <laughs> just turned 90, we just had a birthday party for her uh, last wow. month. We want to give a shout out to my mother. She is at a long-term care facility, mm -hmm. but really all the mothers in our viewing audience have a blessed, blessed Mother's Day. Absolutely. Well, you know, when we were talking about bones and we were talking about orthopedics, we want to talk about, you know, your practice and, you know, where it's located and how accessible is it? Can you get in there and have an appointment? Talk to us about your practice. Yeah, our practice is Northeast Orthopedics and there are uh, six partners okay. of which I'm one. And I think we have a slide. Do you have a slide of that? I, yes, sir. I think we do. Oh, okay. There we go. So Dr. Brian Schultz uh, is on my right, right there. Dr. Pat Simon. Dr. Jamie Lynch is the female who was on this show back yes, in sir. February. Next to her is Dr. John Chance. And at the end of that is Dr. Rex Wilcox. We have been a group since the year 2000, so we're in our 14th year. Wow. Uh, we're proud of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to think we've done outstanding work in that 14 years and been well respected in the community. We have three offices, one by Northeast Baptist on Village Drive, one by Northeast Methodist on Topperwine Road, and one out in the North Central location, not kind of in between Stone Oak Methodist and North Central Baptist. So three locations to kind of serve the northeast part of town. Okay. And how do you become a patient? Say, for instance, you have an injury and do you just call? Do you take insurances? What is the procedure? Yes. Uh, in regards to insurances, I think we're on every insurance plan known to man. Okay. But I don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so it's always best when you call, and the girls, when they answer the phone, if you were to choose to call, will ask what your insurance is, and we'll confirm that we take it. But just for the, I tell people, I think we take every plan there is. Okay. We're gonna, our number is 477-5151. An operator takes the call. He or she asks you what the issue is. You go from there. Okay. Okay. It's pretty easy. Absolutely. And of course, they do the pre authorization. But many times I've been asked, do I need a referral from my primary? So. Yes, and that's what the operators will ask you. And they will go through your insurance, and they'll be the ones to determine if you need the referral. They will help you set up the referral if need be, and they'll walk you through that. The idea is that by the time you get to see us, all those kind of things are done, and we're kind of down to taking care of the patient. Well, you know, you've been in practice for 25 years. It's a long time. So, you know, kind of give some advice to our patients, because let's say it's the very first time. Um, and lots of times people are not um, as willing to open up, but you want them to write some things down and be prepared, do you not? We do, we do. It's a scary thing. You know, the first time you do anything, you know, Kelly and I are very scared being up here because <laughs> it's t TV. Mm -hmm. Y'all are very comfortable with this. We understand that when you first come into our office, it's frightening. We have surgery behind our name. So the first thought is that no matter what the problem is, we're going to recommend surgery. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Nothing right. is further than the truth. I bet we operate on a one out of 30 people that we see. So wow. the risk of getting surgery is actually very low, even though you're seeing a surgery in a surgeon's mm -hmm. PA. 
So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if you can't be truthful to your doctor, who can you be truthful to? I mean, you should think of us as maybe not your priest, but close. Mm -hmm. Tell us the story. Tell us the issues. Tell us how you're really feeling about things. Talk about what you're taking for pain. Don't say, oh, I don't want them to know I'm taking that. Mm -hmm. We need to know that. We need to know how bad you're hurting. Mm -hmm. Those things are very important. Writing notes down ahead of time of your history is important. People get nervous. They forget these things. We understand that. So I, I think thinking about the visit and how you want it to go, it's their visit. Mm -hmm. They should get the most out of it. And by thinking about it ahead of time, I think, and being honest, goes a long way to get them what they want. Kelly, do you have anything to add to that? Because I think that was a great segue into medicine. I mean, I hear that from patients all the time. And you know, they are saying, oh, I forgot to say this, or right. I forgot to say that. Correct. Tell so us. it's great to come in with all of your questions written down. Uh, I see a lot of the post-op patients, and they all come in with their questions written down. It's very nice. So I think we get a, a good setup from our home health folks. They say, mm -hmm. you know, when you're going in to see Dr. Fox, you're going in to see Kelly, have your questions ready. Everything that you have, you know, there we're here to provide any information or any help that we can, um, and we'd like to get it all done within that visit. Now, if they forget something, we'll always have them call. I always tell them, you know, if you if you think of anything, just give us a call. So. Well, one of the things I'm hearing, Dr. Fox and Kelly, is that maybe it's better to come earlier than later so we can prevent that surgery, as you're saying, maybe one out of every 30. But as Chris mentioned, that fear of going to the doctor or I'm going to have surgery because the name's on there. So I think we need to let our audience know. Do, do you not, Dr. Fox, feel oh, that way? Oh, there's no question. What the, we, we, for the most part, as I said, take care of people with arthritis of the hip and the knee. Arthritis is a funny disease in the sense that it kind of rides a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So your pain gets bad, it gets bad, it gets real bad, and so you break down and you pick up the phone to call for an appointment. Mm -hmm. But you don't quite make the call and you put it down and for whatever reason, the pain goes away the next day. And you say to yourself, I've beat this. My prayers have been answered. Can we bring up that, you have an arthritis slide, do you not? We do. Okay, I think we, we can do. bring that up right as you're leading into that real quick. And so you think that the pain has gone away. And so the slide will show that arthritis really is a wearing away of the cartilage, the smooth, shiny covering over the end of the bone. And once that cartilage is worn away, it's not growing back. And we can't put it back. And so people think that it's gotten better. As I say, prayers have been answered. But sure enough, two days later, a week later, here it comes back again. Mm -hmm. And so Kelly and I can stop that pain without surgery. We're going to talk a little later about things we can do that can actually stop some of that terrible pain without surgery. And so it breaks our heart to hear people suffering needlessly because they're just afraid. There's right. no reason. And many of them have the insurance, but they just are afraid. They're yeah. afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we have a lot of information about arthritis, and this is a topic that many of you have called in and wondered about. So I want to remind you, if you have a comment or a question, to please call us here at 734-5371, especially about that topic of arthritis. But right now, we're getting ready to take a sharp break, and we'll be back in just one moment with Dr. Fox and his PA, Ms. Cooper. Thank you. If your pregnancy test comes back positive, it can be a total shock. You may be wondering how you can afford to be a mom right now, especially with your school or work schedule. Here's the good news. There is help. There's a nearby woman's center that can help you completely, confidentially, and give you free advice. If you think you're pregnant, help is here. Call now or go online today. Each day, the world is blessed by the heroic dedication of holy Catholic priests serving in our parishes and religious orders, in nursing homes and hospitals, and as military chaplains around the world. Since the secular culture is often quick to criticize Catholic priests, it's so important for us to offer our prayers and gratitude for the countless holy Catholic priests who serve humanity with courageous virtue and dedication to Jesus and the gospel. 
EncouragePriest.org was launched by the Catholic media apostolate CatholicsComeHome.org during the year for priests to support our priests and promote vocations. By visiting EncouragePriest.org, you'll be able to help the priests in your life through spiritual bouquets, written or video greetings, and collar holler e-cards. Let's pray daily for our seminarians, priests, bishops, and our Holy Father who bring us the sacraments and help guide our path to heaven. Thank you for joining us in this apostolic mission of EncouragePriest.org and CatholicsComeHome.org. a store owner, a mother of two, and an honor student have in common? They've all recovered from a mental health problem, and they're all part of our lives. Mental health problems are surprisingly common. They affect almost every family in America, maybe even yours. Get the facts about mental health. Call 1-800-789-2647 because mental health is part of all our lives. Welcome back to today's ministries. I'm Jeff Tristan. Well, Chris, we've got a lot of information that was given to us and a lot of information to cover. Yes, we do. So, so we actually have a caller in already. Yes, but please remind our viewers what number to call. Absolutely. Please call us here at 210-734-5371 if you have a question for Dr. Fox or for Kelly, his PA. So we have Yolanda, I believe, on the line. Here we go. Hello, Yolanda? Uh, yes, hello, hello. Thank you for calling today's ministries. What is your question? Well, thank you for taking my call. And I've always wondered, is there a cure for arthritis? A cure for arthritis. Well, Dr. Fox, I think that's Here your question. Yo Yolanda <laughs> asked the million dollar question. Thank you for the call, Yolanda. Yes. Uh, no, there's not a cure for arthritis. A great deal of research being done on that. As we talked about, arthritis is a process that wears away the cartilage or the smooth, shiny covering over the end of the bone. We have nothing in medicine today that will re-coat that bone, and that would cure arthritis. We have no way of stopping that arthritis once it starts from getting worse, faster, or slower. What we have, though, is great treatment for the arthritis as it gets worse much like high blood pressure or diabetes. We can't reverse those things, but we have very good treatment that can keep the disease in check if you'll just do your treatment, but no cure. Well, thank you, Yolanda. Do you have another question? No, that was my question. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, you, Yolanda. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now, speaking of arthritis, I think we have a slide on the different forms of arthritis. Yeah, lots of forms of arthritis. Must be over a hundred different forms of arthritis. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. The most common is osteoarthritis, and we sometimes say that's the wear and tear or old age arthritis. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis people hear about, that's the one that's most feared because people have these crippling deformities. Their fingers get kind of crooked, their legs get crooked. It's a disease that affects the whole body. Post-traumatic, and its treatment is a little different mm -hmm. since it affects the whole body. On TV you see Phil Mickelson is advertising one of the drugs oh, yes. for rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. There's post-traumatic arthritis, and that's arthritis that follows trauma. If if Kelly here breaks her ankle and then 20 years later it wasn't set perfectly, it didn't hold up well and develops arthritis, we call that post-traumatic arthritis. There's gouty arthritis if you have gout and the list goes on and on. So there are many different forms but the thing to remember is other than rheumatoid arthritis we treat them all pretty much the same. Well, we have another caller on the line. Susie, welcome to today's ministries. How are you today, Susie? Hi, I'm good, thank you. What is your question? My question is, um, what's the difference between osteoarthritis and osteoporosis? That's a very good very question. Very good question, Susie. Thank you, Susie. 
Uh, osteoporosis is, osteo means bone, and porosis means porous yes. or soft. So osteoporosis means soft bone. Osteo means bone, and arthritis we talked about is a wearing away of a joint. So osteoarthritis is what we think about normally as arthritis. So osteoporosis is soft bone. I'm prone to fracture. Mm -hmm. That's when I get my bone density test to show that I have that. And that is very common with women as they get older. But unrelated to osteoarthritis, people with osteoporosis are not more prone or less prone to developing arthritis. Oh, okay. So they are completely unrelated. Oh. It's that big word osteo, osteo in there that just means bone. Mm -hmm. If you take that away, you have porous and, and arthritis. So the word osteo throws everybody off, and it's a very common question, Susie. Thank you for asking it. Thank well, you, you so much for having me. Well, you know, Kelly, we were talking about women's health. Right. You know, is yeah. this something that affects women a great deal, the osteoarthritis? Uh, it depends. It depends. And like Dr. Fox was saying, there's different types of arthritis. And it's not exactly, we don't know who's going to develop arthritis. Like Is he it was more in, prevalent in women? Um, I not wouldn't really? say more prevalent. Okay. And as far as diagnosis and the history, are we going to be able, I think you have some slides that we can we talk do. about as well. We do. That will kind of introduce so what, to the diagnosis, you come to our office, okay. you know, you've made your appointment, you've got over being a scared, <laughs> and you come in and we do a history. We get your history. We talked about is there, is there an injury, family history, mm -hmm. other joints involved. We do a physical exam. We look at the joint. And last, we get x-rays. And x-rays are realistically, the history and the physical are very helpful in deciding how to treat it. But the x-ray is what makes the diagnosis. And we see the two bones getting closer together on x-ray. Can that be done in your office, the x-ray? Yes, we have x-ray in all three of our offices and we get the views we want right then. By the way, speaking of that, we very much encourage people, if they have outside x-rays, if they've had an MR scan or a CT scan, please bring those to us because oh, we great. don't need to duplicate those studies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. It's one of those things we think about when you ask about an initial visit. Okay. Dr. Fox, I've had many people ask me, what's the difference between an x-ray, an MRI, CT scan? Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. X-ray is what you think of as the machine that you, you hurt your wrist, you put it down, and the x-ray beam shoots through it and shoots through it. It's radiation. Uh, and it's when you see TV, bones on TV that are broken, that's a regular x-ray. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. an and it's good for the bones. An MRI scan stands for magnetic resonance imaging. It's a big magnet. And without going into the physics, it shows detail unbelievable, especially of the soft parts, the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles. And so we use it a lot when we're looking for problems with those things. Lastly is a CT scan. And it's a computerized x-ray machine. So it's radiation, but it chops and slices things so we can see greater detail. Best used, again, for more bony detail. We order different scans based on what we need. So most people think, gosh, I've heard this part. I need an MR. <laughs> Often the orthopedic surgeon needs to make that call because in some cases we need a CT gives us a lot more information than the MRI. So they all are part of our arsenal. Well, you know, quite often if you go to your physician or your primary care physician, uh, they have to send you out to go get your lab test or your x-rays. So you're kind of a one-stop shop when they come to your facility. Yes, yes. We, we, it's more streamlined. Yes. We're, we're accustomed to getting these tests, accustomed to reading them. And so, again, if you've had them elsewhere, please bring them with you. We don't need to repeat them. But the other thing, too, is that saves the patient some time, you know, because yes. you're able to consult with the, uh, your physician immediately. Yes. Well, great. Now we can talk about some of the treatments, correct? Let's do. We have a slide showing us some of the treatments that you guys so offer. We're, we're going to have a few slides to talk about treatment. I'm going to okay. take this first one, and then we're going to have Kelly. By the way, in our office, a lot of times you see me, a lot of times you see Kelly. We worked hand-in-hand -hand interchangeable. So that's the, when people think about their PA and seeing a physician's PA, they're the same person. It's wow. seeing okay. one equals seeing the other. And I think a lot of people don't appreciate that. 
In regards to treatment, we think about medications, and, and people know these medicines, and I think most people have tried them for various ailments, and we're very good for arthritis. We think of aspirin and Tylenol. The NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, what in the heck are those? Those are like the Motrin, the Naproxen, the Celebrex, and we call those non-steroidal anti-inflammatories because there's the steroids, prednisone, and those things. So there's a group of steroids, and then there's the non-steroidal. Supplements, a lot of people like to take the glucosamine chondroitin. Very helpful. Don't need a doctor to get those. No harm in those. And then lastly, the topical rubs have become very popular nowadays. Uh, compounding pharmacies make these for us a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and people put different kind of pain medicine in them. They're very safe and very effective. And we use them a lot around for tendonitis and bursitis around the knee. Very, very helpful. Very helpful. Well, Kelly, you know, when people come to you or, you know, they may mention to you, um, you know, I take this Tylenol or I try this, what are my side effects? Do they, do they um, explain to you what they're feeling when they take these medications and what are your recommendations? Sure. Um, they do. Uh, there's a lot of side effects people associate with the non anti-inflammatories. Motrin, ibuprofen, that type of thing can cause a GI upset. Um, there's several different brands or types of anti-inflammatories on the market. So what will work for some people may not work That's for other people Absolutely. and we will change to do it, you know, try a different type of anti-inflammatory just to see, kind of go down the line to, to see which one might work better for them. And lots of times people may be hesitant. They're trying this, they went to the pharmacy, but you need for them to let you know what it makes them feel like after they've taken it, exactly. when they've tried it out, right? Exactly. And, exactly. and what, what works for one person may not, may work, not for work for the other. Correct. Okay, let's continue on the treatment Absolutely. and on the slides. We're going to talk about activity modification. Kelly. There you activity go. Activity modification. So in the treatment of arthritis, like he said before, we're very conservative. One out of 30 patients will get surgery, so we try and go through methods to reduce people's pain. Uh, medication by mouth was one we just talked about. Activity modification. If it hurts, don't do it. Okay. Uh, just like our mother taught us. So, mm -hmm. And that being said, we certainly don't want you to be sedentary because the weakening of the muscles can also lead to an increased uh, joint pain and that type of thing. So, Well, that's great. Uh, you know, so quite often, sometimes people with arthritis will say, well, this is the way I feel today. Correct. But it may not be the way you feel tomorrow. Correct. Because it is cyclical, right? Right. It's that roller coaster ride. I have a question. So, for instance, when you say, it doesn't hurt if it hurts don't do it Correct. what's the pain level you guys shoot for because a lot of people feel like oh I can deal with this I will get better and a lot of times you hear the scale 1 through 10 10 being the most extreme what would you recommend for our audience out there once they hit this certain pain level it's time to come see a physician well a lot of the treatment options that we have we'd like to get you know people from a eight out of 10 pain down to about a two out of 10 pain, something that's tolerable. We know in arthritis they're going to have pain and with activities mm -hmm. they're gonna experience more pain. The, the least amount of pain that they can be in is certainly the best. So uh, trying to avoid stuff that would increase that pain to a level of, you know, where they can't function the next day. You know, doing activities such as swimming or uh, using a treadmill or being on an elliptical trainer just to reduce that impact load, um, you know does well, tend to help. So I mean, with without the, saying names, I have family members oh, sure. that are just, oh, my knee's killing me today, but it's happened before and it'll go away. Mm -hmm. But it's not okay. They're in their 70s or somewhere right. in their 80s. So what, what's the recommendation? It's time then, Dr. Fox? Yeah, it's, you know, I, I agree with everything Kelly said, you know. The, the hurt don't do it. We, we know certain things irritate some people's knee and hip and other things don't. So if for you walking up and down stairs is the problem but you can do everything else, avoid the stairs. It's very obvious. Mm -hmm. As Kelly just mentioned, you don't get to just sit on the couch and be a couch potato. You got to get up and move. I think when people are interfering with their daily activities, when your mother, let's say, says, I don't want to go out to eat for Mother's Day because my knee or hip yes, hurt, sir. it's time. Okay. I don't want to go to my granddaughter's graduation, my hip and knee hurts, it's time. When you start getting, when your world starts getting small because you can't enjoy life, living, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The you things can't have we that you can't go to church and you've always gone to church. Yes, you miss things, baptisms. That's time to go get help. It's a great right. way to explain it. Mm-hmm. You know, and when we were talking about the help and you were talking about the different types of medication, nutrition plays a big part, especially with uh, taking medication. Are you able to discuss that with your patients? We do. We do discuss that. Um, weight is an issue with osteoarthritis, Rooney arthritis, and the more you weigh, the more pain you're going to have. So we try and talk them into being physically active to lose some weight. That will lessen the, the actual pressure on the joints. And the times that you take the medication and with what type of, with a meal or without a meal? Because I find that working with seniors, they get very confused about that. Correct, Mm -hmm. correct. And we go over all of that. We'll write down a treatment plan and all of that good stuff. Oh, very good. It's very, very important to tell you and, and her staff do a very good job when we prescribe medicines of talking about when to take them what to not take them with, with. Correct. Y- yes. you know, mm-hmm. all those yes. things. In fact, we have papers we give you with the medication and, and the do's and don'ts because you can get in trouble. Yes. They are medicines. They are medicines. They're, they're prescription medicines and we need to take them seriously. They're not, they're not to just be played with. And so is your staff readily available? Like if you feel you have a side effect, can they call you? Absolutely, absolutely. Anytime. Well, that's good to have the support because that's what a lot of patients think that, oh, there's just another number. So now we can talk about some of the treatments you do, correct, with the patients? So I think we have a slide on that as far as treatment. So in regards to the, you want to take that, Kelly, in regards to the... Well, the exercise, keeping the muscles strong, um, that really helps alleviate some of the, the pressure on the joints. Um, oftentimes, if we notice some weakness, we'll get you into physical therapy. Our physical therapist will really evaluate you and see where you're weak and work on a treatment program that's tailored specifically to you. Do you have therapists there in your facility? We do. Oh, okay, great. we do. We have PT in all of our facilities, and you know, I'm going to jump in. Sure. The the you know the average person. Let's go back to your mother. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to That's pick great. on your mother, yeah. but it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day, and she'll be watching. And she'll be watching. <laughs> and so my guess is she has no idea what exercises to do. Mm-hmm. She would be clueless in that, just like my mother would be. Mm-hmm. So a round of physical therapy two or three times a week for three or four weeks isn't going to cure the problem. It's going to give you that launching pad. Understand the exercises. Do them properly. And that way you have some idea of what we want to do. And that's what we typically use the physical therapy for. Some people confuse physical therapy with I'm going to do it for four weeks and then I'm going to be cured. (laughs) Well, back to our first caller, there is no cure. This is a lifetime commitment. So it's a lifestyle now. It's a lifestyle. Nutrition, Mm -hmm. exercise, education, education, all those things. It's a lifestyle change. Well, I want to remind our viewers, if you have a comment or a question, because we're going over a lot of detail, just call us here at 734-5371. Now we're getting ready for our next slide, and I believe it's still on the treatment. Absolutely. Lots of treatment. Lots of treatment as far as some of There we go. Braces and canes. Nobody likes the idea of a cane. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, I, I was telling Jeff before this, my uh, grandmother, um, excuse me, my aunt lived in Houston, Texas when I was growing up, and she would always say that you never know when it's going to rain. And she carried an umbrella with her always, big, hefty umbrella. And somewhere in my second year of residency at the Mayo Clinic, I realized that was no umbrella for the rain. <laughs> that was a cane. Okay. Wow. The woman was in total denial and mm-hmm. had everybody buffaloed. That was a cane. Mm-hmm. You know, people still use canes and they're good. There are braces that are helpful, braces that fit underneath clothes, braces that you wear when you're active. Mm-hmm. Just another treatment modality available, available to us. Not a cure, but just there to support. All things can be helpful. So for instance, the brace. We would never give it to a beautiful lady who's on a TV show. You wouldn't wear a brace for this. But let's take a guy like Jeff. There you go. Who's out mowing his yard on the weekend, raking the leaves, doing that kind of work. Arthritic knee, he'd benefit greatly from a brace. There you go. There you so go. there's an example of who we might choose a brace and who we might not. Well, you know, there are so many different types of treatments. And when we talk about using a brace or a cane, I've seen some gorgeous canes, you know, oh, yeah. they're oh. hand carved <laughs> and the ones that extend. The little sword, sword in there. And there you yeah, go. I good. mean, there's all kinds of yeah. nice things. But let's go ahead uh, and continue on treatment, and we're going to talk about injections. <clears throat> sure. 
Um, there are two different types of injections that we commonly use uh, for arthritis. The first kind is a steroid injection, commonly referred to as cortisone injection. Um, it is the strongest medication we have to get rid of your pain just like that. Okay. Uh, very quick to do in the office. We can do it the same day as your initial appointment uh, after we make sure that that's what's going on and that's what you need. Um, I tell people typically by the time they get to the car, they're feeling much better. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Uh, the second type of medications commonly referred to as rooster comb injections. Um, it's a series in, of injections, one a week for five weeks or four weeks or three weeks, depending on what type of medication you're using. Um, it builds on itself and it takes a little time to improve, but it seems to last a lot longer than the cortisone injections. Oh, okay. We have a caller on the line. Welcome to today's ministry, Gloria. What is your question? Gloria, are you on the line? Yes. Uh, what is your question? I have a question and a comment. All right. My okay. question is, I joined the program at Midway because I, I was busy doing something else with the priest. Uh, I heard somebody say that there are injections that you give to the people that have arthritis. Yes. My sister was on her way to work and she had an accident, a car accident. And from that car accident, the following day, my sister started breaking up with lumps all over her body. Mm -hmm. So she went to the doctor and she was told that she had arthritis and took history and there was nobody in the family who ever heard about having arthritis. So it, he told her that because her arthritis was so advanced and I said that she never had any problems with arthritis before. And we don't know of anybody in the family that had arthritis. And he said, well, whatever uh, cause your problem, I don't know. But you've got arthritis, and it's also arthritis of the bone. And all of a sudden, like I said, she had an accident. They hit her, and she started breaking out with lumps all over her body. Well, and thank you for... She had to take shots. I think the shots cost $200, $400 each shot, and then she had to take them once a week. But my sister said, go ahead, but she was told that she had to inject them herself because the doctor would not do it. Why don't the doctors want to give a shot and say that she had to give to herself? My sister is not the type to take medications herself. She hates, excuse this, what I'm going to say, she hates doctors, she hates nurses, she hates hospitals. Well, thank and you for calling, Gloria. And you. I believe Dr. Fox will be able to address that because he had discussed earlier in the show I about- I know, that's what I'm saying. Yes. I came in halfway the program because I was with a priest. Okay. Sure. Dr. Fox? So I think the question is, the, the family member had a car accident yes. and got jostled around, mm -hmm. went to the doctor after the car accident, and the doctor says there's a lot of arthritis, and the family member Bless them, they never had pain before. Mm -hmm. So how is that possible? That's round number one, I think. That's possible because we see people quite frequently, I'll see somebody in the office once a week that never, had, never knew they had pain in a joint and then they twist it and it stirs up that underlying arthritis. And once it's stirred up, it doesn't quite want to go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to settle down. So it's not uncommon to have disease in the joint that you don't know about hasn't caused you much trouble before, and then have an accident, a fall, a car accident, and now it's revved up. That's not uncommon. It seems unusual, but it's not. Mm -hmm. In regards to the treatment, I can't comment on, I, first off, I don't think we would ever recommend anybody but no. a licensed physician, PA, nurse practitioner, sure putting yeah. a needle into a joint. Yes, sir. That's not a good plan. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know about the person self-injecting those. I don't, I don't think I could recommend that. In regards to the cost, I'm not sure about that either. Uh, that sounds a little pricey to me. I'm not sure about all that. I can tell you that before we would ever do some treatment modalities, you know, one of the things we talk about is what these things are going to cost. Okay. Sure. Like everything else, we've shown a lot of treatments today, and cost is a big factor in that. Well, thank you so much for Gloria. It's time for us to take a short break, and I want to remind you, if you have a comment or a question, please call us here at 734-5371. We'll be back in just one moment.
She's sucking her thumb. She's so beautiful. That's our son. She's got my nose. With new advances in medical technology, we now have a window to the womb that reveals your unborn baby who looks a lot like you just weeks after conception. Now we know an unborn baby is a human life. See what we've been missing. What have you done for your marriage today? I gave a huge hug this morning, like a really big squeeze. She got a really short haircut that she hated, and I wrote her a note and put it up on the mirror saying that she was a cute girl with cute hair. I got him mustard and mayonnaise for his sandwich when we were having lunch. Today we've actually organized a date night tonight. And silverware and napkins. Wasn't that wonderful? What have I done for my marriage today? Wow, that is a great question. I took the baby while she worked. I suppose I I, I didn't yell at him for anything yeah, at all. I got up with the baby while he slept. Yeah. I have carried my wife's purse. What have you done for your marriage today? What have I done? I listened to my wife uh, when we talked on the telephone today. Well, I've done today what I usually do, and that is obey. She really likes it when I listen. What have you done for your marriage today? Little things can make a big difference. For ideas, go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't do it. 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 Uh, you know, I'd never do it. Don't mess with Texas. I wouldn't do it. Don't mess with Texas. <laughs> Welcome back to today's ministries. We've had quite a few callers, and I understand we have two on the line. Yes, we do. Because our guests today are Dr. Fox and uh, Kelly, and we thank you so much for being here. And those lines are just, uh, they're keeping them busy. Yeah. So I will take our first caller. I believe, uh, did we have our first caller on the line? Is it Jennifer? I think, I think we have Jennifer on the line. Jennifer, what is your question? Yes, hello, Dr. Fox. My mom had a cortisone injection on her knee years ago, and she said that it was the worst pain ever. She doesn't ever want to do this again. Do these shots really hurt? Ouch. Ouch. Oh. Kelly? Ouch. <laughs> Take care of the pain problem. We went all the See way how around. this works in my office. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I frequently do the injections, I'd say probably 99% of the time. Uh, we do a lot of injections in our office. Um, you know, typically the anticipation is worse than the actual procedure. Uh, people come in, we try and make them as comfortable as possible. Uh, we have an ultrasound device that verifies that we're in the correct position before we inject people. We use a little skin refrigerant to kind of anesthetize the skin before we get, and we use a very thin needle. Mm -hmm. So typically, after we're done giving the injection, the most, most of the time I get, are we really done? Yes. Because it's the anticipation, knowing you're going to yes. get an injection. Correct. So sometimes Correct. it's that mental, you know, yes. attitude. Yes. And so lots of times, you know, the steroid injections, people are going, wow, my pain is just going away. Exactly. Well, I, I, exactly. I think, you know, to give Kelly some credit, she says she does a lot. Kelly will often inject some 30 people a day. And she's been doing this with me for at least seven years. She hits the so bullseye. So there, there is a <laughs> skill set associated there with you this. Go. You know, our family doctors maybe inject somebody's knee once every week. Mm -hmm. You're looking at somebody who injects 30 a day. Wow. There, there's a, a definite Skillset. advantage. So and she's she's very skilled at it. She's, I, she's being very humble. I also think leading to our previous caller, that's why you want to have the supervision of correct. a physician. Correct. And, not just and you want you somebody who does a lot. That does a lot. Correct. Well, we have another caller on the line. Maria, welcome to today's ministries. Yes. What is your uh, question, Maria? I, uh, if, if, uh, if arthritis is, it's a rheumatoid arthritis, is it operable? Rheumatoid can, can arthritis. They, uh -huh. Can they operate on the finger to straighten a joint? Okay. That's my question. Thank you and for calling. Mm -hmm. Maria ask if you can operate on a finger to straighten it with rheumatoid arthritis. Yes, that can be done. Uh, we have a, uh, Dr. Simon who's in my practice, uh, does hand surgery, and we're actually fixing to have another partner join us, Dr. Otto, who does hand surgery. Both of them can do surgery on rheumatoid arthritis fingers and hands, and that's a very successful operation. 
Well, if it needs that, again, if, if it, it needs, needs that. that. Well, let's go to the next slide. Perfect I'm talking timing. about treatment yeah. and, and surgery. surgery. So if we'll have the next slide, Dr. Fox, you can address when so, all else fails. Yes, yeah, surgery is when all else fails. We've talked a lot about treatment this morning. And there comes a day if the arthritis gets bad enough that we can try every one of the things just mentioned. And unfortunately, they don't stop the pain. And in that case, we replace the joint with a total hip or a total knee, depending on which one. We do that surgery at Northeast Baptist Hospital. Uh, we do it with a joint club there where all the nurses just take care of people that have had total hips and total knees, and the physical therapists just see people that are, had total hip and total knees, and everybody around you just had a total hip or total knee. It gets to be very routine. We've had joint club now for six years, and so everybody associated with that program, all they do is take care of people every day that have just had a hip or a knee replacement and become very good at it. The pain management are part of that program. People know they hurt. The physical therapy and how that affects the total joint. So it's a whole package with the joint club that we do over at Northeast Baptist Hospital. Now, you mentioned there, there's a picture. Is that Northeast where you're doing? That, that is Northeast Baptist. That's our, uh, that's our home. Okay. And uh, to the right there is Chris, uh, kind of the lead physical therapist, uh, working on somebody's knee. Well, y'all are kind of expanding a little bit because tell us about you're going to have a woman's ortho health? Yes, the Baptist, uh, our, our group has come up with what's called a Northeast Orthopedics has come up with a Women's Sports Institute. Women's, w women are a neglected part of our society. For the most part, they're home taking care of the family. They're taking mm -hmm. care of children. Perhaps they're holding a job and they will send the husband and the kids to the doctor before they'll seek treatment. It's very heroic, mm -hmm. but we need to reach out to them and there's, you know, physical ther therapy for women is a little different. Treatment for different ailments is a little different. There's the endocrine problems, there's the osteoporosis, there's the fractures and so we've tended to specialize. So we've opened up a whole area of our practice that specializes into women's orthopedics. The Baptist has adopted that and they want to look at the entire women's health program and so we're coupling a program with them to talk about women's orthopedic help from health, mm -hmm. from all the way from the 16-year-old volleyball player that sprains her knee wow. to the 78-year-old lady who falls and breaks her hip. So this will be a team approach with other specialties as well? This will be a team approach, but orthopedic related, orthopedic women's health. So we're just going to surround the orthopedic part of this. Well, we have another caller on the line. Welcome to today's ministries. Hello? Hello? Yes, what is your question? Hi, uh, yeah, my name is Jeff. Uh -huh. um, this is a question for Dr. Fox. I hear him now talking about the uh, women's clinic, and I'm obviously a male, and I want to know if y'all do surgery on males. I also have a question um, about uh, total knee replacement. I've been to my primary care physician, and uh, he took x-rays and said I had bone-on-bone uh, -bone arthritis and the injections and braces and other options most likely would not help. And I understand that uh, Dr. Fox is a joint replacement surgeon, and I think I'm ready for a total joint, total knee replacement. Uh, what do I do now? Well, thanks well, for the call, Jeff. Okay. Hang up immediately and call 477-5151. <laughs> Let's put that number up. As you mentioned that, I think we have that number that we can. So there, there were two questions in there, Jeff. Thank you again for the call. The first is, do we operate on men? Certainly. Uh, we, still, we still operate on men. We're always going to operate on men. But the Women's Institute is, a, is something that we want to focus on. We want to bring, make it easy and available for women to get access to orthopedic care. So I'll always see men and we'll always see women, but this will uh, make it easier, for, I think, for women to gain access, if you will. But you know, when you were talking about access to, to care, uh, women, especially in the Hispanic community, you, you have your children and then you're so used to taking mm -hmm. care of the family that you do not tend to your own health until much later in life. And Correct. that is the biggest area of underserved arthritic patients that there are. Kelly was absolutely correct when she answered the question, women don't have a higher rate of arthritis 
but they have an enormous rate of untreated mm -hmm. arthritis, mm -hmm. much more than men. And that goes to Jeff's question is, do we operate on men or take care of men? Yes, mm -hmm. but we want to reach out to women and try to get them in to get treatment. They are, we all have mothers mm -hmm. and we want the best for them. Mm -hmm. Get them in to see somebody with the orthopedic problems. It's about problems. education and hopefully preventing some serious injuries along yes, the way. Yes, yes, and reducing pain. pain. This mm -hmm. pain can be helped. Mm -hmm. As we've, we showed a lot of different modalities, we talked a little about surgery and a lot about other options. Well, thank you for calling, Jeff. Thank and you. I want to remind our viewers, if you have a comment or a question, just call us here at 734 Five three seven one. You know, we've been talking about the Northeast Orthopedics Group, and I think it's an appropriate time to mention your locations again and, um, you know, the, the partners you have. So, go ahead. Well, we have three locations. Uh, we have an office off of Topper Wine and 35 by Northeast Methodist. We have an office off of 410 and Starcrest, which is at Northeast Baptist, and we also have an office location in Hardy Oak. I'll let you... Review and, your and then my partners uh, we talked about are Dr. Brian Schultze. Uh, Does he specialize in anything? Dr. Schultze takes care of hips, knees, and shoulders for the most part. Okay. Uh, Dr. Simon is a general orthopedist, very, uh, very well educated, came down from Wisconsin, actually does a great job of taking care of everything. I think he's the smartest guy because he still does it all. Oh, wow. Dr. Lynch, who you met, uh, mm -hmm. is a sports medicine doctor. Shoulders and knees are her specialty. Mm -hmm. Dr. Simon, similar. Uh, and Dr. Wilcox, who uh, is a senior partner in our group, and he just sees office. His, his practice is limited to office patients. Okay. And so they're all available, all ready to help, all embarking on conservative treatment over surgery, and all have an emphasis on trying to get women into our practice. Great. So once again, can we put that phone number up to the, the contact to the office there? I think it's the 477 number if they have any questions. Please, absolutely. And I'm going to ask the question. So if a patient needs to be seen right away, stat, how soon can they get in and what's the wait time? once they're in for their appointment to actually be seen. So, so I, ha I, I have to yeah. say, you know, what happens is a person calls the number and says, I have a knee problem. Mm -hmm. They will go through that list of all six doctors and they will give you the first available appointment that we have. Right. And so with six doctors, I would say a day or two would be at the most. I okay. think we could probably, that same day would be difficult, quite frankly. Okay. But the next day, I'm rather sure. I've been in practice for 25 years, as we said. I don't think you're going to see me the next day. In fact, I'd be very disappointed after 25 years of practice if you were able to see me the next day. I would like to think, you know, our practice is bigger than that. And so please be diligent. Please wait. If you, if you choose, let's say, Dr. Schultze, Dr. Chance, Dr. Simon, one of the other doctors, and, and you want that doctor, it may be two or three days, four days to see that doctor, okay. but some other doctor may have an opening in their template, surgery got canceled for whatever reason, and they could see you that, that next day. But perhaps. after your, your show today, I'm sure you're going to have lots of calls, Dr. Fox. You have articulated so many of the good areas and made it very um, understandable of to the treatment, more or less, of arthritis, and I think you'll be receiving lots of calls like you got the call from Jeff. Thank you. Now, with the program you mentioned, the Women's Health, is this going to be offered at all the Baptist hospitals, or talk a little bit more about that? So. Right now, Northeast Baptist. Northeast That's being rolled out at Northeast Baptist. My guess is it will explode. Mm -hmm. It will get very large. Okay. There are a lot of women. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the, it, it's got to be, you know, when, when you undertake a initiative like this, it has to be piloted somewhere. You've got to smart, start kind of small, mm -hmm. work out the kinks, work out the rough edges, mm -hmm. and then grow it, and then it's ready for, to go big time, so to speak. So right now, our group in Northeast Baptist is the pilot area, trying to work out the kinks, trying to see how best to roll this out how to get women to feel comfortable to get in and get health, you know, their orthopedic needs met. Well, you know, we only have a couple more minutes left in the show. I want to thank you both for being here. You know, we wish you well with the women's uh, uh, 
specializing in women's health and orthopedic health. And I think that that, like you said, is a pilot project that can just expand, you know, once you work out all the kinks and see what, you know, how uh, women react to it. And I think uh, we wish you well in that. But please uh, invite our viewers one more time to uh, give us the phone number for your practice and um, let them know where, you are, uh, where you're located. Kelly? Uh, you can reach us at 477-5151. Again, we have three locations, one at uh, Topper Wine and 35, uh, one at uh, 410 in Starcrest, and again in Hardy Oak. Now, when the patients come in, of course, like you said, they may have to wait for one, but now we know that if there's another available appointment with another physician, y'all work together. We're, we're a team. And, and that's we're a group. what's good. Yeah, that's we're what's a group. Good. So I think I really appreciate y'all coming on, and that's great information for my mom personally and a lot of our viewers out there. That's right. We want to thank you so much for being here today. Our show is called Today's Ministry, and it truly lets us know that this is your ministry, you know, sure that is. you have the expertise and caring for patients, caring for individuals that have pain so that they can feel comfortable in coming to you for the treatment because you have so many years of um, experience and uh, you care for the patients. It comes across yes. in how you articulate it. Yes. So thank you for being with us. Thank you we for want to us. wish all the mothers and grandmothers and aunts Absolutely. out there uh, have a wonderful Mother's Day. And until next week, thank you for watching today's ministries. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.